Hey, I want to talk today about where your head needs to be with Define My Day. Um, we see a lot of different types of people using Define My Day, but this is the most important thing, right? It doesn't matter what you're using it for. It matters where your head's at. And the one thought you need to have when you're using Define My Day or doing anything in life is that it's, it's my responsibility. It's my responsibility to fix whatever situation I'm in. It's my responsibility to improve the situation I'm in right? You can be anywhere. You can be physically unhealthy. You can be in a terrible job. You can be in terrible relationships. All of that stuff doesn't get fixed unless we decide to fix it ourselves. And that's what today's video is about. I'm going to give you some examples of different ideas of how to use to find my day, but I'm going to get a little bit hard with how we deal with some of the mentalities that we might have going forward. I see it in the comments on our posts. I see it in the emails from our customers. I see it in our user group. And right now, this is the get real video about how we need to change our mindset. And again, I don't care if you're using Define My Day or not, you gotta flip that mentality to take responsibility for the situation you're in. It might not be your fault, but it is definitely your responsibility. You are the person that takes your life with you until you're gone. And unless you want to be blaming everybody for all the stuff going on in your life, we need to make that change in that mentality right now to fix where we are. And that's what Define My Day is doing for me, right? I'm not perfect. I still struggle with stuff. I'm struggling with stuff right now. I always have, I'll always have something that I'm working on, but I have to fix it, right? Now, there might be people that I need to step away from, and that's happened. And you might have to do the same thing. You might have to change your job. You might have to change your circumstance. But again, that falls on you. That's your decision to make that change, right? So let's go into some of the pushback we get about the Find My Day, right? Number one, I don't have time to do this process. That one right there is the one that just makes me go, oh, come on, really? Yes, you have time. You have time. I guarantee you can find 10 minutes in a day. Even if you want to make this a longer process and make it 20 minutes in a day or 30, you have that time. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. There's time we waste. If you, if, if, and do this exercise. Log whatever you're doing every day. To carry a notebook, carry a pad around with you and write down what you're doing every day, including the time you spend gossiping, watching TV, um, you know, on, on the internet, uh, checking emails, like all the stuff that we get lost doing, it all adds up. It all adds up. You know, 15 minutes here, a half an hour there, an hour here. That's sucking up time that you could be improving yourself. And that's the, that's the, the, the big thing that a lot of people miss with this process. It's not supposed to be onerous. It's not supposed to be something that takes your time. It's supposed to give you time by helping you focus on the things that give you energy, that help you progress in life. It's not supposed to be taking more time from you. It's helping you identify those things that are draining you. Those things that, you know, you might even think, this is good for me, but then when you're done with it, you're, maybe you put off the things that you should be doing, so then you have more anxiety and more overwhelm, and, and then you feel worse about where you are. We want to identify that. That's what this process is for, to identify those things that are just wearing you out and, and put more time and energy towards those things that are building you up making a better life for yourself, taking that responsibility. You have time. I guarantee you have time. Now, I didn't feel I had time when I started this. When I was just writing things down on a piece of paper before this book even existed, I didn't think I had time. And the way I created time was I woke up a little bit earlier. I said, you know, if my wake up time was 6.30, I woke up at 6.15. And then I started waking up at 6. And then I started waking up at 5.30 until I found that sweet spot. I bumped it back until, until 6, right? When I realized, okay, it's getting to be a little bit too much. You know, as I added more to my morning routine, whether it was define my day meditation exercise, I created that time for myself because at that point in my life, way too many people had control over what was going on in my life after eight o'clock in the morning from work to customers to, you know, people that I do want to give my time to like my family, but I couldn't create the space for myself after a certain time because there's too much else going on. Phone calls coming in, emails coming in, responsibilities, places to be. So I created that time in the morning for myself. So you do have time. You can make the time. You can make the time. It's what you choose to do with the time. The next one is, I don't have the money, right? Look, for one, we give you a basic version of this resource for free. You can download it from the website. 
If you can follow that resource, you can make the time and you can find the money. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Use the process for free. You can do that process. It's just three steps. You can use that process for free for as long as you want and you will make progress. It's a matter of identifying your priorities, your distractions, and creating a better mindset for yourself. You can use that tool and do that. You might not get everything that's in here, but you can still make progress. I challenge you to at least do that, right? At least do that. Use the free resource. But in the end, I mean, look, if you buy the entire year for this, you're spending like 30 cents a day. If you buy it once a month and you're spending full price in $16, which you can almost never see it for $16, there's always a way to get it less, right? There's always a way to, like, we do a three pack for $39.99. That's cents a day, less than a dollar a day for a process that's going to help you move forward. And if you don't like it, you can send it back and we'll give you your money back. But that's the thing that most people won't do, right? Most people want something that's going to just make things happen for them. And that is never going to happen. Never. You have to make the choice to make a change. You have to write down every day, these are my priorities. These are my goals and these are the priorities that I have to do every day to get me to where I want to go. And we'll get into how, how you structure that depending on what your priorities and goals are. But it's the process of writing it down. You can do this for free right now. I did it for free for years. And if you want to do that, you go buy a piece of a, a pad and a paper and you can look at the photos we have on our website and you can create your own. I'm okay with that, right? I'm okay with it. Just do it. Use the process. It will work for you. It's impossible for it not to. When you look at your day every day and focus on your priorities, identify your distractions and stay away from them. Think about the things that are good in your life, your appreciation. And then at the end of the day, review what your progress was. Make adjust adjustments. Don't look at yourself with judgment. Oh, I didn't do this. I, I'm such a bad person. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get you to look at this and say, okay, I didn't do this. I didn't do it because other things got in my way, because... Um, I didn't really feel like doing it. I didn't have the energy. Okay, why didn't I have that energy? You know, should I do it, try it again tomorrow? Or maybe should I address something else that's draining me, that's causing a problem for me? That's growing that awareness so that you can improve and get better. We're not trying to cause more anxiety. We're not trying to cause a bad feeling. We want you to take time to look at what's going on. A lot of people get really good at avoiding stuff. A lot of people get really good at fooling themselves into thinking that it can happen later or it's not my fault or any other reason why they can't get what they want. And I'm here to tell you, you can do anything you want. You're making a decision every day to do it or not to do it. And whether you want to spend money on that, uh, aside from spending money on a coffee, a beer, a uh, junk food, a Coke, whatever whatever you're spending money on right now that you can give up one little thing and get that 50 cents a day back to do this process, you, you can find the money, right? It's not that, if, if you want to schedule things, if you want a calendar, you know, if you want to live by your calendar and just schedule things and that's, and that's all you want, yeah, there's cheaper options. There's way less expensive options. Or you can get 365 days for under 10 bucks. That's not what this process is for. This process is to help you focus on the things that are most important today, right? The things that you need to accomplish today to get that life that you want. And I'm not judging what you want. You can want more money. You can want a better relationship. You could want to get out of the job you're in. You could want a promotion at the job. Like whatever needs to happen to change your life, do it. Do it. Take the steps now. If you need to go back to school, go to school. Take one class. Make that a priority. I'm gonna go one class, or I'm gonna watch one YouTube video a day about whatever I need to watch. There are ways to change your situation. You choose how you wanna spend your time. The, a big thing that I, I see on our posts, when we put examples on the, the posts, that just, I, I, I sit back and laugh, is when people, you know, we, we, have a, we have one out there right now for around Christmas time, right? Where the woman wrote, uh, I think the first priority was, you know, decorate the house. The second priority was buy gifts. And the third priority was things to do with the kids. And people would be like, oh, how this person, blah, blah, blah. How she, dare she not put kids number one? 
and other people are, you know, this should be number one, and this should be number one. That judgment doesn't need to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about that. I'm spitting right now. That doesn't need to happen. What one person's priorities are can be completely different than somebody else's priorities. Your priorities are your own. Your life is your own. If you want to make the kids number one, make the kids number one. Know why you're making the kids number one. Is it out of obligation? Is it because you were taught to do that? Or is it because today the kids need to be number one? Because I need to address their needs. Whatever the reason, you have to be okay with it. And you don't have to worry about what everybody else is okay with. If you want to put God number one, put God number one. If you want to put your job number one, put your job number one. Maybe it needs to happen. And maybe your job being number one helps your kids. Maybe more money helps you give your kids a better environment. So don't look at other people's priorities with judgment. Look at it and say, this person's in a different situation than me. This person needs to change this before they can change that. And then when you look at your own priorities in a day, look at those priorities and say to myself, I'm okay with that. Or I didn't get that done because of this. But not because I'm worried about what somebody looking over my shoulder might think. Or obligations to somebody else. Or whatever, whatever is going through your head. This should not make you feel overwhelmed. And now let's go into that, right? Overwhelm is another thing. I put too much on my plate. I can't do it all. That's what this is for. That's what this is for. I didn't get any of my priorities done. Why not? Why not? Why didn't your priorities get done? Any of the reasons are okay as long as we look at it and address it. I didn't get my priorities done because they're not really priorities. It's not in my heart to do these things. Okay, then what is? What is? I didn't get my priorities done because a, a friend called me and was going through an emergency and I had to go deal with, with, with whatever that was. I had to be there for her. Okay. Somewhere in your value system, your friends and your relationships are a top priority. It might not have showed up today in your plan, but by addressing the things that we can address in our own time, then when those emergencies pop up and somebody else needs us, because it's a priority for us, we can put our own stuff on hold and they jump onto our priority list. And we can go address that person's issues, be there for that person. And we can feel okay with that when we're writing at the end of the day, you know, I didn't get anything done because Angela called me up, she's going through something and I had to be there for her. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then when we can readdress our own priorities, we can get back to that stuff and say, you know, I didn't get to this, I'm going to get to it now, I fell off because, you know, or I didn't have time because this person needed me or this came up. That's okay. That's okay. We don't have to get on ourselves for not doing it, right? Alternatively, in that situation, Angela called up and you said, no, I can't because I have other things going on. You have to be okay with that too, right? If you can't be there for her, then, then be okay with that, right? And if you're not okay with it, if you think at the end of the day, I got all my priorities done, but I wasn't there for her, how do I feel about that? Well, you know what? Next time this comes up, I'm going to have to be there for her. Or maybe, look, I wasn't there for her today. I'm going to be there for tomorrow. And I'm going to show up tomorrow. So again, none of this, none of this has to be like ugh, pressure to do stuff. It's all got to be what comes from your heart and in your conscience, what feels right. And then analyzing, growing that awareness of where you're spending your time and how you feel about it at the end of the day, right? All right, what's another one? Um, don't need it. I don't need this process, right? Uh, and that's, that's a comment we see too, right? We, we, uh, we throw out a post and somebody say, well, I don't need to do that. Okay, you don't need to do that. Maybe you naturally, maybe you naturally do the right thing. Maybe you have this way in your mind of organizing things. I know from, uh, from studies that have been done, I, it's scientific fact, that writing things down helps us organize our thoughts. And journaling every evening helps your brain process what you did that day and helps you reorganize it and even sort of imprint some of the things in your mind so that you can start tomorrow just a little bit better. 
So you maybe maybe you don't need this process, but maybe that's also a blind spot for you. Maybe you don't think you need it, and maybe maybe you just try it and see what happens, right? If there's an area in your life that you're not happy with and you've not been able to resolve it, maybe this process is for you. Look, if everything's perfectly fine, if you have nothing going on, then hey, enjoy it. But if you can project yourself forward to a day when you're gonna when you're gonna leave this world, and you can think to yourself, I'm not going to be happy because of this. I'm going to regret this. If you think you might just a little bit be there, where you're gonna have some regret and some doubt about how you spent your time, well then maybe you do need the process. Maybe you do need to focus on what's most important today. Maybe you do need to write down every night how you feel about how your day went. Right? Now, if you're perfectly happy with where you are in life and you have zero regret and zero doubt, fine. If you're the person that's on our posts and is writing, I don't need this, who the heck would need this, this is garbage, or, or, or I don't even know if anybody said garbage, but this is, this, is, this is not worth my time, blah, blah, blah. If you're throwing out that negativity, why? Why are you throwing out that negativity? Why do you care? Just keep on scrolling, right? You don't have to, you don't have to be there and post and then get into arguments with people. If you're doing that, you need this, right? If you're doing that, you need this. You need it because you need to be aware of why you're doing that, why you're throwing out negativity, why you're picking on other people's stuff, why you're judging other people's posts and comments. I, I, look, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it, but if you're out there throwing stuff at other people, why? What's going on, right? You have stuff that you need to address. I'm, I, I, I'm, I, I mean, really. I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm telling you, like, I've been there. I am there at some points, right? I am there. I have stuff. And I'm working it out with this. I've been working it out with this for years. And I'm never going to stop. I'm always going to have stuff. Every time, every time I figure something out, I find another problem with me, right? But it's growth. Because I guarantee I would not want to be where I was five years ago. I don't want to be where I was six months ago. I, I don't. I look back at that person that I had that was living my life five years ago, and I think, man, he didn't know what the heck he was talking about. He was putting his time in some stupid places. He was hanging out with some really bad people, right? There were some toxic experiences that I was having, creating, and diving into, encouraging. And that's not okay. And in six months, I'm going to look back at today and go, man, I learned a lot since then. I don't want to be the guy that's got his blinders on going, man, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I freaking hate life, but everything's fine. That's not who I want to be. Not who I want to be. So I focus every day on the values that I have, that I write down every day. I align my goals to it. I align my priorities to it. And I identify that stuff in my life that keeps pulling me away, right? That stuff that keeps happening that I need, I need to identify earlier and say, nope, not happening. Not happening. So that brings me to another thing that we get some feedback on is, you know, today I will avoid. The today I will avoid thing. Oh, that's, that's negativity. You're inviting negativity. No, it's not. No, it is not. If you're going through life thinking that everything's just got to be perfectly positive every day, you're fooling yourself. I'm sorry, you're fooling yourself. There are things to avoid. You gotta avoid oncoming traffic. You gotta avoid running into that brick wall every day that you keep running into that's stopping you from going to where you wanna go. Sometimes you gotta stop relationships. Sometimes you gotta stop watching so much TV. I was there, I was there, running into brick walls every day. God, why does this keep happening to me? I don't know, maybe you need to stop doing that. God, why is this relationship so hard? I don't know. Maybe it shouldn't be and you need to quit it. God, why don't I have time to do anything? I don't know. I watched three hours of TV tonight. Maybe I need to stop doing that. Maybe I need to avoid it. And you can play games with yourself to do that, to do those avoidance types of things, right? The big thing, like the today I will enjoy section, I don't get to enjoy it unless I do the thing. I do my priority. 
first things first. It's that first things first mentality. So I, you know, I can't watch three hours of TV. I don't have time for that. I gotta spend time with my kids. I got dishes to do. I gotta write down my priorities for tomorrow. I gotta journal. Maybe I have to exercise. You know, I, I didn't finish that project I have to work on. Am I going to kick it until tomorrow? Or am I going to take my TV time and finish that project? Right? Am I going to educate myself? I want a promotion. Well, how come I'm not getting that promotion? Educate yourself. Find out why. Make it priority to go to your boss and ask, how do I get this promotion? And when he tells you, you got to do this, you got to do this, and you got to do this, go do it and make that a priority. At the end of the day, when you want to go watch TV, take a course. Go learn something. Right? We, we waste so much time. So today I will avoid is about stopping that. I'm not saying you can't mentally check out. I'm not saying you can't have recreational activity. Make it a priority. Right? Make it a priority, but make sure that it's giving you back energy and you're not just avoiding stuff. Right? Make sure that when you watch TV, when you're done... You're going, yeah, that was worth my time. Because if it wasn't, whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? It's not your boss's fault the next day. It's not your wife's fault for getting upset you didn't do something around the house. It's not your husband's fault because you know he's not getting the attention he needs or, or maybe he asked you to do something like that. Not his fault that he's upset the next day because you found time to watch TV but not be there in the relationship. It's not the kid's fault for feeling neglected. It's not the friend's fault that you couldn't be there for him or her. You found your time. You spent your time where you thought you wanted to. And if that damages you for it, we need to know. We need to know. So today I will avoid. That's what that's all about. That's what it's all about. Now, do we use Define My Day for the weekend? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're, if you're hitting it for the week and then you're not using it for the weekend, you're missing out. You are missing out. Because on the weekend, when we can sit down and identify, you know, today, look, I have two young boys. Nine and five, right? I write that in here on Saturday. You know, priority number one might be yard work. It might be, I don't know, uh, doing laundry. Right? That might be my priority because I didn't do it all week and it's piling up. So today has got to be a priority or I'm going to feel that pressure. So today it's a priority. Normally a to-do list item got graduated to a priority. It's got to get done. So after I do that, I'm committed to doing that. After that, then the kids are priority number two for the day. Priority number two, after I'm done doing my chores, I'm going to go take care of my kids. And today, you know, priority number one might be just kids. Task number one might be, um, you know, maybe you need to buy them clothes. Maybe you want to take them out to the children's museum. Maybe you want to take them to the park. Maybe you, you want to have them help you cook dinner. Maybe you just want to read, right? Maybe a priority is just to read to your kids before they go to bed. You know, and you can replace kids with anything. Replace it with spouse. You know, I, my spouse today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this for him or her. You know, if you're on vacation, can you use to find my day? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I don't want to get to the point where I'm scheduling every moment of my vacation. But I do have priorities. I have goals for my vacation week, right? I want to make sure I go to the beach five times. And when I'm at the beach, this is the mindset I want to have. I'm going to let go. I am, you know, task number one, I'm not going to look at my phone. Task number two, um, I'm going to enjoy the day. I'm going to enjoy the time. Nobody's going to bother me. Task number three, wear sunscreen. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, I mean, like, you can, you can make sure you make the most of that time. And at the end of the day, you can journal how you did. You know? Ah, oh, this guy got next to me and, and threw sand all over me, and it really pissed me off. All right. You know, yeah, sure. But did you let it ruin your day? Yeah, I let it ruin my day. It ruined the whole day. The blah, 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 blah. All right, so how do we address that? How do we make it better for tomorrow? Tomorrow, if somebody throws sand on me, I'm going to say, you know, excuse me, could you not do that? And then I'm going to let it go. Or maybe you don't say anything, but you still let it go. Don't let it ruin your day, right? Or, you know, I, you know, I slept too long and didn't get to do this and that and the other thing. You know, tomorrow I'm going to make sure I get up on time and do this. I'm not, and if you're the type of person that wants to take a vacation and not think about anything, right, and doesn't want to set any kind of expectations for yourself, that's okay too, right? You can write that down. Priority number one, relax. Relax. And that's it. 
And then when you go to the, to the end of the day, you know, today I was successful in relaxing, not a care in the world. You know, we enjoyed doing this and we did that, you know, and you can write it all down and you're just imprinting into your mind and you're making it okay in yourself, in your mind. And, and you're saying, you know, yeah, but maybe I could do this a little bit better tomorrow. You know, I, I relaxed, but I could relax a little bit better by doing this, right? That's what this whole process is about. It's all, it's flexible for you to handle it any way you want, right? You don't have to do it any particular way. You do it for yourself the way that you want to do it. So can you use it on the weekend? Absolutely. Today, my priorities, my priorities were addressing little loose ends in my business, having a video for you guys, and then priority number two is football, right? Priority number, priority number two is, uh, task number one for that is gonna be sit down at one o'clock and watch a game. Number two, be there with my boys, enjoy it. And number three is gonna be grill some chicken. And that's, that's it, that's my priorities for the day, right? I had loose ends in the morning, and priority number two is watch football and enjoy the day. That's it. Do I, do I, do I feel bad or, or angry at this book for, for, for me doing that? Heck no. I feel grateful. Because how many times have I got stuck in work and then missed the kickoff for the football game and not been there with my kids? Or been sitting there and, and playing on my phone and not been present in the situation with my boys enjoying the game, right? It's happened. It's happened. That's why we have to set our intent with the things that we even enjoy so that we make sure we enjoy it, right? It's not to take away that enjoyment. It's to make sure we do. How many times have you been in a place that you've wanted to go and found yourself mad at somebody around you for being inconsiderate or found yourself wasting your time by texting somebody else and not paying attention, not being there in the moment? I'm sure it's happened to you. And then you don't, you, 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 you're done with it and you realize, well, where'd the time go? Well, it went away because you weren't present. You weren't aware. You weren't intentional with where you wanted to focus. Right? All right, so how do we use, how are we going to use Define My Day in different situations? So number one, if you want to use it for work. Now, I, I blend all of this. Like I look at my life as, you know, like I have different seasons. This week was different than last week. I have different priorities this week depending on what my focus is. But you can segment it out depending on your situation and use it for specific things. And I think that over time as you use it, you'll change how you use it. But if you just want to use it for work to start, you know, you want to, you want to, you know, whether you want to get a promotion, uh, you want to change jobs, maybe you just want to have a better mindset. Maybe you got some bad feedback at work and you need to improve a few things. So your goals, you know, if you have a promotion, your goal is going to be, you know, uh, get promoted, right? And maybe that's a longer goal than one book can cover. Maybe that's a goal for the next six months. So that might keep, get, keep putting on every book. Get promoted is my goal. Get promoted. Get my get promoted. And everything's going to flow down from that, right? Your weekly milestones, whatever your track to get promoted is, those weekly milestones are going to show it. And that daily priority is going to show it. You know, if, if bringing a better attitude, a leadership mentality to work is something that you're getting feedback on, then every day maybe. You might say the same thing every day. Leadership mentality, priority number one. Leadership mentality. And then maybe the tasks underneath that are get feedback, um, you know, have, have a mentor tell me their tips. Uh, it could be watch a video online about leadership. Every day, those little tasks might change, might be the same. Maybe you commit to doing one leadership video five minutes a day every morning. So you start your day off with that, that mentality, right? You know, if, if changing jobs is a priority for you, you can do that too. Your job might suck. You might work 10 hours a day, get paid nothing for it. Your, job, your boss is miserable and your coworkers stink. Got it. I got it. Right? Now you can choose to stay there, but you got to improve your mindset about it because that's a choice you're making. Maybe you have to. Maybe you don't have any other options right now, but you can start creating those options. You can create an option in 15 minutes a day. You, you can educate yourself, take a little bit of a class, 15 minutes every day. That's an hour every four days. It's almost two hours a week where you're improving what you know. Maybe you improve your mindset. Maybe you gotta go on YouTube and search for motivation, mindset. Maybe you're just taking 15 minutes to meditate every day. Maybe you read a book, a chapter every day. 
whatever that might be. Just do, do like it doesn't need to be complicated. Just create the little pockets of time where you're improving yourself to change your situation. And things just start rolling up, man. Things start getting better when you do that. All right, so say you want to do this for your personal life, right? And, and say, say your priority for you is improving your, uh, your relationships. Maybe you have to improve your health. You know, you can use a portion or all of this as just a way to improve your health. You know, my goal for, you know, uh, say, say your goal for 2020 is to run a marathon, right? If you want to run a marathon, there are steps to take to get to that. You're not going to jump off the couch and say, I want to run a marathon, unless you've already been doing it, which, great. But if not... You know, I'm not running a marathon right now. There's no way. But how am I going to do that? If I want to, if I decide I want to run a marathon sometime this year, so let's just say July, right? I have seven months. So that means for, you know, maybe the first 28 days, my first book, I'm going to say I'm going to run two miles uh, by the end of this month. Okay. So then the milestone for the first week is going to be I'm going to run a half a mile and walk a half a mile. And then daily, my priority is, you know, run a half a mile, walk a half a mile. doesn't matter how fast. Just do it. You know, maybe you need to break that down even more, right? Maybe it's not running the mile that we need to do. Maybe, it's, maybe we need to put our shoes on and get out the door and just start walking, right? That's okay, too. I'm telling you, for me, I, I had this experience just a couple of weeks ago. I didn't want to go to the gym. I didn't want to go to the gym. I knew what I had to do. I knew the routine I needed to work on that day. I didn't want to go, but I just kept making the, the turns uh, in the car to get me to the gym. So I made the, like my priority at that moment. That's not how it was written in my book, but my priority at that moment was get to the gym, right? And then it was get in the door. And then it was just start moving. And eventually you're 45 minutes later and you've been working out for 45 minutes. You're like, okay, all right. I got it. I got it done. I'm done. May not have, might not have been my best day, right? Maybe I didn't lift as heavy as I wanted. Maybe I didn't run as far as I wanted or as hard as I wanted, right? But I did it. It was something. And, and I got to be happy with that because it's better than the alternative. You know, when I made that right at the light, instead of making that left, I made a positive decision. I voted, and that's an Atomic Habits thing if you want to go right there. I voted for the guy that I want to be in that moment instead of voting for the guy that I don't want to be. I went to the gym, right? Now, going back to the marathon thing, set metrics, set attainable goals. You know, you go one day, you say, ah, I, I, I didn't you run the mile that I wanted to. Well, that's okay, why not? You know, maybe you had something weighing on your mind it just sucked away all your motivation. How do we avoid having that happen next time? How do we make sure that tomorrow we do get it done. We make a pro positive step forward. Maybe you physically can't run that first mile or even walk that first mile. You know, so maybe if you want to run, you know, maybe that marathon goal was just a little bit too high. Maybe we need to bring it back down to a 5K. Maybe we need to bring it, bring it down to running at all. This process will help you become aware of it. Maybe your knees can't handle running. Although you want to, the reality is they can't. How do we address it? Do we need to do something else? Maybe we go to a stair climber. Maybe we go to a rowing machine. There's some sort of other aerobic activity that we can do that will improve our health, take that weight off our knees, and get us to a place where we can then start moving forward on that big goal that we have. Maybe we got to kick that goal out a year, but we can still get there. You know, maybe we need to consult a doctor, right? Maybe we need to say, hey, doc, why are my knees hurting so bad? And then he'll give you an answer. Maybe you got to go to physical therapy, and that physical therapy can be part of this too, right? It all can happen. You just have to decide to make it happen. Commit to it and then go, right? And you're going to have times when you say, I don't feel like it. And that's where the growth happens. That's where the growth happens. It doesn't matter. Like picking up this book, picking up this book. I don't even want to do it sometimes. The growth happens when you do it anyway, right? If you know it's healthy for you and you do it anyway, that's when the growth happens. And I'm not going to lie to you. There are days I really don't pick it up. It doesn't happen. And I have to figure out why. I had the time. I, had, I know I had the time. I just didn't do it. Why? Am I avoiding having a thought about something? 
Am I thinking I'm too big for this process? Am I getting a little too, too, too confident in myself? Because I guarantee if I don't pick this book up for a week, I feel like a wreck. I'm telling you. Because I know I'm sliding back. And it's not because this is bad. It's because I let bad things get back in my head. So, you know, <laughs> it, it's... If you're avoiding something that you know is healthy for you, there's a reason why and we need to explore it. And maybe we need to explore it with some help, right? You know, maybe you need to talk to somebody about it, whether it's a friend or a professional, I don't know. But if there are things you're continuously avoiding, if there are things that are continuously causing you problems, it's your responsibility to handle it. You gotta handle it. That's it. Gotta handle it. All right, what else? Uh, retirement. So we do have a lot of people, and I'm going to go to students too, so if you're a student, don't check out on this one. But listen, retirement, we have a lot of retired people that are using this also to help keep their structure in their day, right? A lot of people have worked for 30 years and you hear those anecdotal stories about people that work and you know, once they're done, things just start slipping away. Like their health slips away, you know, they, they lose direction, they get cranky because they just don't have that sense of like responsibility and purpose, right? And, you know, if you retire at 65, 70, 75 years old, you might still have 10, 20, 30 years left. How do you want to spend that time? It could be a third of your life. How do you want to spend that time? Decide on that, right? We want to decide on that. We want to say, you want to set metrics for ourselves. You know, as boring as it sounds, you want to set metrics for yourselves. You know, I, I want to improve my relationships with the people around me. Maybe I want to build new relationships. Maybe I want to improve my health. Maybe I want to grow in a certain area. Maybe for 60 years, I didn't get to do this thing that I always wanted to do and I need to work toward doing that. We don't want to atrophy. You know, when that sense of purpose, that purpose of going to work and working hard and that sense of responsibility, when that's gone, we don't want to atrophy. We want to continue to grow. We grow under stress. We grow when, we, when we're challenged, right? There's no growth without challenge. Just atrophy. And that goes for everybody, whether you're retiring or not. Whether you're retired, whether you could be just starting out. Don't avoid that stress. That If you avoid it, you're just going to get a habit of avoiding it. And you're going to be miserable over time. That is not where you want to be. Not at all. You want to grow under stress. There are certain stresses we want to avoid. I mean, there are certain things that are just not good for you. You have to align your values with, and decide what stress you do want to to get overcome. You know, there's some stress to be avoided and we talk about that in the today I will avoid, right? But there are certain stresses we need to overcome and that growth and awareness of what those things are is this whole thing, it's this whole thing. So, you know, for those retired people, is it good for you? Yes, absolutely good for you because you want to use it to address, to grow, address the things that you want to grow and to, you know, have that sense of purpose going through life. Maybe it's spending more time with grandkids or your kids or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Experiencing new things. I don't know. But the, it, it, you got to have that sense of purpose, whether it's using this tool or not. All right. So for the students, the young people of the group, right? And actually students can be anybody because we have people that are middle-aged going through, uh, uh, you know, continuing education or uh, graduate programs. It can be, you know, you can use it for that also. You know, it's, it's, that, it's that, that tool that can help you really focus on what you need to focus on because at a young age, there's a lot of distractions, right? I mean, you know, the, 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 the amount of things that you can distract yourself with, um, are, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's crazy. And the only way that we can fix that or not fix it. We're not going to fix it. There's always going to be distractions. The only way that we can address it properly is by saying, this is where I want to go. And these are the steps to get me there. And these are the actions that I have to take. It's something that, that I don't think people now are learning at a young enough age. And in fact, I didn't learn it when I was a kid, right? We just expect that things are going to happen for us. We don't know that we need to create those things daily. And so we're even trying it with our kids and, and, and showing them that, look, if you want to go here, that's okay. You know, if you want to be a championship Madden player that, that makes a million dollars at competitions, fine. 
What's it going to take for you to get there? And are you willing to sacrifice all this other stuff? Now, we got to put the training wheels on that, right? And for a nine-year-old, I'm not going to let him play Madden for eight hours a day. So we're going we're gonna, to, our priority with him is, you know, you get, you know, X amount of time to play with your PlayStation, but then you have X amount of time with your studies and then X amount of time doing stuff that's healthy and then X amount of time playing with other kids. And we got to define all that out. And then we tweak it and adjust it as we see we need to, to make sure he's successful across the board, but he should have the habits of being able to identify where he's investing his time. And that's something we're working on now. And then when you get into high school and when you get into college, hopefully those healthy habits are already in there. But if not, we need to get on those. And I'm talking to you, the the college student right now. We need to get into that and say, you know, like, look, stuff's not magically going to happen to me, right? I'm not going to graduate and make $100,000 a year. If you do, good for you. Chances are it's not going to happen, right? We need to have the good, the good skills to move forward. And that's, you know, focusing on what's most important today while also taking care of ourselves, right? Too many generations have been beaten by that, that, you know, I just need to work harder, work, work harder, work harder. And when I work harder, I'm going to get rewarded for it eventually. And a lot of times we work hard in the wrong direction. Or that doesn't happen because we worked so hard, we, we wore ourselves out and now we're burned out and we're not there for anything else we want to do. Or we died young, right? And we worked so hard for retirement and then the retirement never came. You don't want to be there. I don't want to be there, right? I was stuck in that. And that's going to take me to the business owners, right? The business owners are the people that you're my people, right? You're making it happen. But you can get stuck in that trap of doing everything. And you can get stuck in that trap of working 14 hours a day and 16 hours a day. And you can get stuck in that trap of, you know, feeling like you're competing with other people and showing how much money you have. And, 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 you know, and, and it's just, there's so many things that can, that can fall on top of you. You know, I was telling my kids and my wife, we'll make it eventually. We'll make it eventually. I'm doing the hard work now, so I don't have to do it later. The problem is that later never happens. More work keeps coming. The more complex a business gets the more work keeps coming on, right? The more you grow, the more work you have. And unless you get in the habit now of properly segmenting that, you're never going to get to that place, right? You're never going to get to that place. And so, you know, we, we, we work our businesses, but we have to make that time and block it off to make sure we're spending it with our family or being healthy for ourselves. I know for myself, working on a business, even working on this business now, you know, I let my health slide because I'd wake up early in the morning and work until the end of the day and I'm too exhausted to do anything for myself, too exhausted to do, to work on my own health. That can't happen. Can't happen. Because you know what? No matter how big my business gets, if I'm not around or healthy enough to see it or enjoy it, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You know, and, and what would happen with my wife and kids? You know, I'd work. I'd leave the house before 8 in the morning, get home after 6, be cranky, miserable, not be present because I'm thinking about everything about work, or I'm still doing work after dinner, and my kids are not getting the time that they deserve from me. Which, you know, you don't raise your kids, right? And then you have more problems down the road. You know, your kids are out doing things you don't want them to do. They're not making good life decisions because you're not there to guide them down the road. You know, I mean, we, we make our own issues. We make our own problems. And we have to be aware of of where we're going right now. Look, and I'm not judging how you raise your kids. All I'm saying is be aware of what's going on. You know, don't be mad at them in 15 years or 20 years when when things aren't going right because they didn't learn the skills from you. Right? And I'm not perfect. I'm making mistakes constantly with my kids. And I always have to readdress that. But as a business owner, you know, there's a special set of challenges. You know, we got to, we have to, have to make sure we're focusing on the most important things when we're in the office. You know, a lot of us take on things that that we shouldn't. You know, we have that shiny object syndrome. We have that thing like, oh, this is going to make me more money or, or whatever, right? They're like, or this marketing plan is going to, is going to work or, you know, whatever, whatever might be going on, new tools and new, new ideas and whatever. What I found is that there are very few levers in a day that we need to pull where we can make a really huge impact. It's that 80-20 rule, right? 
80% of our, our results come from 20% of our actions. So if you can cut away, and this goes for you personally if you don't have a business, if you can cut away 80% of BS that's going on in your life and focus on that 20% and let go of, of the other stuff, man, you will be so much further ahead and you will be happier. And so if you as a business owner can walk into your business and say that if I get nothing else done today, I'm going to do these one, two, or three priorities because these are the impactful things I need to do today. Do those things and don't get stuck doing other stuff. Don't get sucked into other things going on. You know, I had to make a conscious decision to not get sucked into my email or responding to people's phone calls like this. Nick, can you do this? Nick, can you do this? Nick, can you do this? Because what happens when you get stuck in that is you get so inefficient. You get so inefficient that you're not really doing anything big. And you're not doing that, that the one thing that your customer is requiring you to do, that thing that they're going to base their opinion and their evaluation of your business, you know, you're not doing that one thing. And so you might be responding to all their problems and all their questions and all their stuff and calling it customer service. But if you're not doing this one thing really well, they're still going to leave you. Because you need to be doing this one thing. This is what they're rating you on. You know, if you're a salesperson in a business, if your business is sales, you know, and you're not doing those critical actions to make more sales, but instead you're doing all this other stuff. You know, you went golfing for four hours or five hours. What did that bring you? You went to networking events. What did that bring you? Could you be spending your time more effectively? Maybe it did bring you something. Maybe you made a relationship. Maybe you built a relationship and that's okay. Be aware of it. And if you can say, yeah, that was worth my time. But if there's this other thing over here that you could be building, whether it's developing another employee or, or working on your, your business strategy or getting your finances right, if all this is over here blowing up, but you're on the golf course for four or five hours making relationships, eh, what needs to happen? If this is more important over here, golfing, fine, fine. But if it's not, maybe we need to address these things over here. All right? Right? So in all of this, it's all about aligning that, that daily action every day with where we want to go. We, if I can leave you with anything, it's that what you're doing today is telling the universe where you want to go, right? Whether it's God, the universe, or karma, or whatever you believe in, what you're doing today is telling the universe where you want to go. You are creating your own plan. And if you're not taking action on that plan in alignment with where you want to go, you're not going to get there. It's not going to magically happen. You're not going to you're not going to take this path, this direction and magically jump over here and accomplish something. You have to align your daily actions with where you want to go. I cannot stress that enough. Can't. I can't. Nothing is going to magically happen. I, I keep wanting to repeat it because it, it just doesn't sink in for a lot of people. we got to make sure we're doing the things today. If you want to be healthy, if you want to live longer, you got to exercise and eat well. If you want a promotion, you got to do the things today that are going to get you that promotion. If you want to have a happy retirement where you, where you enjoy every day and you don't decline in health, you got to do the things today that give you purpose and health. If you want to have a good relationship with your significant other, you got to do the things today that are going to get you there. That's it. If you want to get out of that crappy job, you got to take the steps to get out of that crappy job without blowing up your life, right? So say you're under financial stress, all right? You, you don't, you're not making enough, right? You need to make more money, but you're already working 10 hours a day and you're working a shift you have no control over. What can I control? What, Nick, what can I control? You can control your mentality for one, right? You can go to work with a positive attitude. You're going to be there no matter what. Are you going to be there cranky and miserable? Or are you going to be there and get the job done and do it the best way you can and have a positive impact on the people around you? Because at that point, you're taking a vote to be a good employee. You're taking a, a vote. You're, you're voting to be more valuable to that company. And when you do that, 
people see it. And if they don't, you take that value and you go somewhere else because somebody else will value it. There are people out there that will value the work that you are willing to put in to the job and they will pay you for it. And the more value you add, the more people out there that will be willing to do it, to pay for it, and pay more. You People will compete for your work if you make it clear how valuable you are. If you're not, if you're just going to go in with a bad attitude, complain about this and that and everything, that's not valuable. That's not valuable. People don't want that. And in fact, they would probably prefer to get rid of you if they could find the person that is giving the value, that's coming in with a good attitude. And again, if you're in a company that doesn't value good attitudes, in fact, management attitudes stink, go somewhere else. Make sure you have the value that you can take somewhere else. It's a hard truth, but it's true, man. It's all about value. Value. As a person, you are running your own business. You're the business of you. And if you want to make more, if you want to be happier in your job, if you want to make more money, you have to add more value to the person paying you or the potential person paying you. Otherwise, you're a commodity and it's just not going to matter. If you're bringing a crappy attitude, if you're bringing mediocre work, if you're checking in at 851, or I'm sorry, 801, and leaving at 459, and making sure you get every ounce of that, that lunch break, and during that time, you're just bringing mediocre work, man, nobody's going to pay for that. Or nobody's going to pay well for it. It's a harsh truth, but it, it's true. Nobody's going to look at that and go, oh, I want more of that. That's, that's valuable. I'm going to pay more for that. It's not going to happen. They're going to pay you because they have to. But the minute somebody comes along that walks in at 7.59 or earlier and leaves until the job, after the job's done, or maybe they, maybe a priority for theirs is to be there at 8 to 5, take their lunch break, but they work really hard in the spaces where they need to, that's valuable. That's valuable. And the right people will give you something in return for that. Money, vacation, perks, promotions. You can control all that. And the mentality that you can't, man, you're already losing. You're already losing. As an employer, I can tell you, I will pay for somebody that works hard, that adds value. Make me decide every day. Make me decide every day about that, or make me scared every day that I might lose you and I will make sure I will keep you, right? When you bring that kind of value, like I will never let this guy go. There's no way, there, I can't. If he starts looking for a job, my business will suffer for it. If that's the case, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I keep you. You gotta look at it that way. You gotta look at it that way. And how you find out is you go to them and you ask, how can I get promoted? How can I be more valuable? Just you asking that question is going to make you more valuable. Now you got to follow through on it. Don't say, how can I be more valuable? They tell you, and then you go, eh, I don't really feel like doing that. Ugh, that's not a good situation to be in. Be more valuable. I mean, you can extend that everywhere in life too. Be more valuable in relationships. Be more valuable to your kids. Be more valuable to your community. You know, that's something we didn't even touch on. You know? Be more valuable to your community. That's actually, you know, if we're going to go anywhere with this, that's why we started doing this, right? It's why I started putting Define My Day out there. It's why anybody that comments, I can do this myself, I say, fine, I can help you do it yourself. If you can do this better than me, I'll tell you everything that we went through to get this done. If you can do it for yourself, do it. I want you to do it. I want you to be successful in whatever you want to do. If you want to do this, if you want to do Define My Days, well, let's talk. If you want to do whatever you want to do, I'll help you do it. Ask me a question. I'll answer it. It's up to you what you want to do. If you want to make, you know, if you want to, if you want to make your own here, go for it. 
I'm here, I'm doing this because I enjoy doing it. Because it's my way of giving back the things that I've learned, right? It gives me a sense of purpose and a sense of enjoyment to do this stuff. Now, do I feel like I can do more in my local community? Absolutely. And we've volunteered for things and we've tried things out and I feel like we can do more. There's seasons though. I also agree with that. You know, I might make, some years I might just make simple donations. Other years I might actually put my, my hands in it and try to do something worthwhile. Like, like not that donating is not worthwhile. Don't, don't misconstrue that. But getting in there and actually putting my hands into it. You know, whether it's volunteering at a soup kitchen or a shelter. You know, sometimes you just need to get more involved. But other times, doing that is going to take away from the priorities we need to focus on. You know, maybe you got relationship things that don't get fixed if you're spending time volunteering, doing other things. Again, got to be all awareness. All right. It's 1230. I got to go watch a football game. I appreciate you being here and watching this video. If you have any questions or comments about anything I've said here, leave a comment. I will be happy to answer any questions you have. Keep this one thing in mind. I repeated it a lot earlier. What you do today tells the universe the direction you want to go. You're voting, going back to Atomic Habits, you're voting on the thing, the, the person that you want to become, that thing you want with every action you take. This is the tool that has helped me get to where I am now in all aspects of my life. In the places that I didn't get, there have been reasons, right? I'm not in the best health I've been in in my life. I need to get back there and I'm using this to get there. But I can also look back over the past year and see why I didn't get there. And I can tweak and make adjustments and decide, you know, I'm happy with this, I'm unhappy with this, and this is what I'm gonna have to live with going forward. But connect the actions you take today with where you want to go. Not gonna magically happen. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, remember to comment or ask questions about anything you need more clarity on. Define your day to define your life. And what is define life? Oh, I wanna answer that real quick. Define life is that place that you create for yourself, where you can be happy and fulfilled, satisfied with where you are, right? So that when, you, when it's your time to go, you can say, I did this, I didn't do that, but I'm okay with it. That's where I want you to be. That's where I want you to be. So define your day to define your life. Be fulfilled and satisfied. Take care.